I just spent over a thousand dollars on a 118 model car collection, and before you expect me to open a closet filled with thousands of Hot Wheel cars to come flooding out, I hate to disappoint, but I'm someone who values quality over quantity. Before we get in the video, I do know someone's going to ask, what do you think of SSC's response? The way I see it is, until they do the second run with the two Atara, I'm not going to talk about it for a while. That's just how it's going to be in my case. I don't want to make the mistake of reporting on false news ever again. I've been very stressed and embarrassed because of the whole SSC mishap so let's just put that behind us and let's just enjoy this change of pace all right this is a nice calm video I've wanted to showcase this collection for a while now all cars featured in this video I purchased off of Amazon and I will have links in the description below as well as in my pinned comment so you can check them out and even purchase them yourselves. Do note that I'm not sponsored by any of these companies which means that I have the ability to be as brutally honest as I want while reviewing them because if I'm going to recommend these products I want you to know what you're buying beforehand. First I'm going to showcase the models and then I'm going to rank the brands based on their weaknesses and strong points at the end of this video. First things I want to talk about is this Koenigsegg 1 to 1 which cost me over $300 and the Bugatti Devo next to it only costed a mere $38. I spent a lot on the Koenigsegg because I'm a fanboy for them and since Bugatti's their rival I can't be bothered to drop the same amount of cash on their cars. That's not to say that the Bugatti model is bad by any means but let's cover the Koenigsegg first. This one-to-one -one is made by AutoArt, and it features carbon fiber literally everywhere. The carbon fiber isn't just for show, it is actually textured and you can feel the individual grooves like you would with the actual weave on a real carbon fiber car. This is the lightest model in my entire collection, in fact it is so light that it feels like I'm holding a feather in my hand. Even the wheels on this model are carbon fiber, just like the actual car. The paint is an exact match to the one that you would find on the multi-million dollar hypercar, and this spec specifically is the only Koenigsegg 1 to 1 that exists on the entire western hemisphere. I got to see this exact spec of 1 to 1 in Chicago at Lake Forest Ferrari, and I'll link to the video of me seeing it there. Unfortunately, it's one of the least viewed videos on this channel, but I'm exceedingly proud of it because having that be the first Koenigsegg I ever saw, as well as to this day the only Koenigsegg I ever got to saw, is just really romantic, and to this day no other modern Koenigsegg has quite seemed to capture that romance that the 1 to 1 did for me. This model has functional dihedral synchro helix doors which are probably worth at least 100 of the 300 and they're strangely addicting to open up and close. It also features detachable mirrors which is by far one of the smartest features any model car could have and I can't tell you how often side mirrors snap off during shipping whether it's from other reviewers or other model collectors I hear them complain about it a lot and I personally experienced this because I ordered an auto art Aston Martin Vulcan I got it last week and before I could even have any fun with it the moment I opened the box I saw to my dismay that it had already had one of its side mirrors fall off during shipping. I mean, to be fair, we all know those videos of Amazon package guys that just throw the packages around. I can't blame them. They're on a tight schedule. But it's disappointing that some of these companies haven't taken that roughness into consideration because shipping can damage a lot of things, especially without removable mirrors. But because this car does have removable mirrors, that just completely solves that nuisance. The engine bay on this car is nothing short but a work of art. It's fully carbon fiber, features all the structural braces, proper coloring, and visible suspension work. You could even see the exhaust tip lead into the mufflers and catalytic converters towards the engine. Now, even the tiny font on the engine, they're still written perfectly. And my camera's not going to do that justice. But all the vents on this car, they're also functional and see-through. So if I were to actually close it back up, you can still peer through the vents and still see through the individual holes and now we're going to talk about the Bugatti Devo. This is made by Burrago, which I'm just going to call them BBR from now on because I'm probably going to butcher their name. So having said that, it also features textured carbon fiber, which is really impressive for a car that is only $38 because even my $50 plus models that have carbon fiber do not have this. The model is solidly built, doesn't make any weird noises when you pick it up or shake it, and it's noticeably heavier than the Koenigsegg, which to be fair, it's like that in real life, but the point I'm trying to make is that the carbon fiber on this model is likely fake. It's probably just plastic that has the grooved applied to it. They probably use some mold to mimic the texture and get the weave going. Now, the Devo does lack windows on its doors and all the vents are fake, and this will be true of every other cheap car that you see. 
And because the grills and vents are fake, like I said, you cannot actually see through them. It's all just solid plastic. And to me, that does kill some immersion. But if you're someone who wants to display this model from 20, you know, five or 10 feet away, you really won't really notice much of a difference. The exhaust tips also aren't very deep and they this lack of depth, like if you look at them long enough, you realize how tacky it looks. And that's just me being really, really like elitist, I guess, because I have a higher end model. So I notice these things, whereas I feel like if you're someone who just wants to spend one tenth the price, I'm proud to say it is not one tenth the quality. In fact, I would say it's probably only 25 percent less detailed than my Koenigsegg is, despite being, you know, a thousand percent cheaper almost. Well, probably like 900 something percent. Like, I'm not going to do the math. The point is it's way cheaper. But not way more disappointing. It is actually still amazing bang for buck. Moving on to this Maisto 4 GT, a quick layer's note I'd like to add is that if you ever want to open a Maisto model car, just hold them upside down. The hinges on these models are so pathetically weak, they pop open when the car is held at even the slightest angle. All of my Maisto models were purchased brand new, straight from the box, and they all feature these loosey-goosey hinges. And it's just infamous, you know, when you shake them around, you move around with them, even if you just gently hold them and start walking, the gentle vibrations from walking will still make them rattle their inner parts and make noise. Now, of course, you're not going to play with these models, so that shouldn't bother too many people. But the loose suspension still bothers me because it makes it look like these cars are constantly slammed and cambered out. And the reason it's like that is you're actually supposed to put them on the stand they come up with because the stand that they're propped on does help support the weight of the vehicle because without that stand helping it it seems like these cars are so heavy that they aren't actually the wheels and suspension and tires they put on these cars aren't actually capable of keeping the car upright because they all camber out if you don't put them on their stand I know someone's gonna get angry about that, like, oh, you're freaking moron, duh, you're supposed to put it on the stand, how could you, why are you taking these out of their boxes? And my response to that is, in the same way a caged bird may stay pretty longer, they're gonna also be miserable longer. The reality is, I don't care for resale value, and therefore I don't really care about keeping models in mint condition inside unopened boxes. Yeah, mine get dusty, yes, I do clean them off, I use the same brand of automotive detailer and microfiber towels I use on my actual car to clean these cars, therefore they don't have any micro scratches. To me, I just think it's cooler to display a car and even reach it and pick it up every now and then. It's just nice and fun. Their paint does have some orange peel, especially this Mustang GT I have here. Now, obviously, I ordered a deep impact blue one to match the Mustang GT I own in real life. If you stand even five feet away, its orange peel is rather noticeable. They do add a lot of flake to try to fool your eyes into noticing it less, but you will notice it if you see it. A really good example to show, if you don't know what orange peel is, by the way, it's an uneven finish that develops when paint isn't sprayed on carefully and properly. To demonstrate what I mean, if I shine a ring light on this Mustang versus this Auto Art Corvette, you'll see the reflection on this Corvette is a smooth circle. It doesn't have any dimples or grooves because there is no orange peel to cause those irregularities of light reflection. However, the Mustang's reflection has more pimples than a teenager in puberty. It is very rough around the edges and it doesn't even look like it's a circle anymore. This is forgivable to some extent because, again, this is a $30 model. So you can tell they're mass produced and a machine does the painting. It just kind of zoom, zoom, zooms and doesn't really care about getting every single corner perfect all the time. But when you're paying $30, you don't really care about that perfection. Also, since I showed you this Auto Art Corvette Z06, we may as well talk about it next. I bought this car to match my real life Z06 as closely as possible. My Sto does also make a C7, but theirs is only of the Stingray, and the Stingray isn't as thick as the Z06, and it lacks the wine body. The Stingray also lacks all the aero components and features and carbon fiber roofs and hood and so on and so forth, so I really wanted to have a Z06 since it would look almost exactly like my car in real life. There isn't really much else to say for this car. It's basically perfect. It did cost $160. It once again is from AutoArt. When you're paying that insane amount of price, of course it's going to be good. In fact, it's so perfect that I'm actually kind of jealous because the paint on this model doesn't have any orange peel, which isn't true of the real-life Corvette, because real-life Corvettes are made by Chevrolet, and you know better than I that Chevrolet does not care about quality control for their paint, even for Corvettes, so it's kind of funny how this model actually has something better than the real-life full-size version. And now onto my final auto art model, we'll look at the Aventador alongside the Maisto Huracan. So the Maisto Huracan suffers from the same Maisto issues I already mentioned. It cambers out, it has wonky suspension, its paint does have some orange peel, it does have some loose hinges, but overall, it's a fraction of the price. It was $50, which is, you know, it's more expensive than other Maisto models, but it is of the Performante. So if you want a sp very specific trim of a Huracan being the Performante, those are really hard to snipe for very cheap prices. 
prices. And this is the cheapest one you have available on the market, if I'm correct, for 118. And when you have that on the consideration, I'm not complaining. I think it's really, really cool looking. Now for the Auto Art Aventador SV, I'm going to gush again. So this engine bay, fully colored. The carbon on it, all authentically textured. Even the freaking firing order that you see on the V12 black on the car in real life, in as tiny font as possible, it is still readable and you can actually see it. YouTube's garbage rendering system will not do this justice. It probably will not translate anything that I'm showing as readable. That's fine. Just take my word for it. You can actually read this stuff. It also has functional vents just like every other auto art model so you can actually peer through and see the engine. You can peer through these tiny side vents and you can see the structural braces, the frame, and even the suspension. And if you're wondering how I managed to keep these cars clean from dust with all these tiny holes and you know you would expect dust to come into these holes and build up and gather on the engine bay, my response is I just use air dusters. So if you have a gaming computer you likely have seen an air duster, you know what they are. They only cost like four bucks, you know you just spray it around go crazy and it's really good at cleaning dust off these models too. On to my final Lamborghini of the collection and the oldest, the Lamborghini Diablo GT by Motormax. And Motormax is an interesting company because they have a big issue with their cars. They only have one issue, but it's a big issue. And they're cheap for a reason. So this costs $29, but it by and far has the ugliest panel gaps I've ever seen. The rear bumper specifically is coming loose. And no matter how many times I try to snap it back into place and apply Loctite to seal it in place, it just comes loose again in just a matter of weeks to months. That means that it's not a gap but it's actually a mold issue meaning that like the rear bumper is not properly sized to fit into the fenders and this usually happens when mass production companies they reuse molds too often without cleaning them so there's a lot of leftover stuff that's still sitting in the mold and that will cause the mold to come out to be smaller than it's supposed to be and in moments like this it won't fit properly and whenever they do have scheduled cleaning they'll make good ones again so i imagine if you're lucky you may get a diablo that's actually a better example than mine and if you're really unlucky you might actually get one that has worse fitment than mine does. A big strong suit is I do actually love the paint that is featured on this. Unlike my stoves they don't have any sort of orange peel and that's very impressive. Also the underbody detail is really nice and for the price they also have textured carbon. So let's take a look at this Motor Max Zonda right here. For $69 it has textured carbon, great interior, beautiful paint, and gorgeous wheels. It also features rubber side mirrors which is also a beautiful design choice. I still prefer removable mirrors but having rubber ones isn't super bad either because then it means you won't accidentally snap them off when you're moving this about. It also means it won't come off during shipping. Now the main downside compared to removable ones is that rubber ones because they're made of rubber don't have the same matching finish and glossiness that plastic or die cast would have anyways like the diablo the zonda does feature laughable panel gaps and fitment just look how huge they are also the doors are closed all the way and even then they still have this horrendously noticeable gap between the door and rear fender no amount of aligning this manually can fix it and I'm at the point where I just don't really care I'm not going to try to sand it down and repaint it and correct it I'm just okay if that that's just the reality of these models let's talk about my favorite collection within the collection so these are my three last cars and I'm going to show you in this video it is the Ferrari FXX family so we have the FXX from Hot Wheels we also have the FXXK and the FXXK Evo and those are both from BBR the Hot Wheels FXX costed $80 and it has a beautiful flake finish to it and I love the blue overall I think it's insanely cool the engine bay on it is super detailed i love how it just opens up completely it's properly colored you can still read the ferrari font on it for an 80 dollars model by and far this is my favorite model it, it blew my mind because i always assumed hot wheels makes cheap you know really tiny cars which they do and those are nice fun cars to collect also but it surprised me that their 118 lineup is this quality it has really solid suspension it doesn't make any weird noises when you pick this model up and shake it it's one of my better models honestly i would say i would think this model has like 150 dollars quality for an 80 dollar it's like twice the amount that you would expect as for both of the BBRs, the FXXK and FXXK Evo, they're just really long boys with nice detailed engine bays that are evenly colored and so on and so forth. They have good paint, they have a nice sparkle and flake to them, they also have functional butterfly doors that are found on the La Ferrari, which is the road car version of them if I'm correct, and they also make use of rubberized side mirrors, kind of just like how the Zonda did, and especially with how long these side mirrors are, I'm really glad they featured that, and I love both of these cars. I know it's basically like buying the same car 
are because their trims are barely different from one another. But I appreciate the subtleties in the difference. And it's nice to have a collection within your collection. You know, I really love the FXX because they're track only cars. You rarely get a chance to see these in real life. So it's really exciting to me to have them just always available for me to see in model form right in my office. And finally, before we go, we're going to talk about all the brand's weaknesses and strong points and just overall my review of them. So first off, we'll start with auto arts. Auto art models have no weakness in appearance, build quality, function, and detail whatsoever. The only true downside these models have is that they're really expensive. Very expensive, in fact. You can buy a Nintendo Switch for the price of this Koenigsegg. And for someone usually so frugal with money, so much so to the point that I still use a $150 smartphone, it's funny to think I now possess a car model solely used for a display that costs twice as much. So hobbies do weird things to your wallets, and ultimately I only recommend auto arts if you're someone who really really is into collecting model cars, or let's say you want to start a collection but you have like your ultimate dream car and you want to do it the best honor, like when your friends come over and see your collection, you want to have one model that is noticeably more detailed than the rest, save that money to have it be that auto art. So my still models are about the same price as Motor Max and BBR. Each of them have their own distinct weaknesses. My still models are reliant on their stand, and it's really nice that they come with a stand. And honestly, it's kind of necessary if you don't want to see them camber. And you can fix the cambering by just taking your fingers and realigning the wheels every so often. They do have orange peel on some of their paintwork, probably the most noticeable of all the brands. They also have the loosest hinges three times in a row because I have three Maisto models and all three of them have loose hinges. I, and they're all different models too. It's not all of the same car. I do not think... This is me getting bad luck. I think that's a genuinely a Maisto design issue is that they just have loose hinges. And I'm sure someone in the comments who owns this is like, oh, you're wrong. Mine is so snappy. Buy another model. Buy Auto Art. Buy BBR. You'll be changed. You'll be blown away about how much more firm their hinges are for their doors, their trunks, and so on and so forth. Other than that, the dimensions are nice. Their fitment is pretty good, especially for the body panel gaps are really nice on Maistos. And obviously... If you were to look at these from 5 to 10 feet away, these are definitely still very, very doable. And for their price, I would say they're really nice. Motor Max. So Motor Max models are very detailed. They have great finishes. They're solidly built. And they don't feature the weak hinges that Maestro models tend to have. They, they also don't have the weak suspension, so they don't have the cambering issue that they have. Now... They do have one glaring weak point, one of which is a huge weak point, and it's to some people a total deal breaker, especially photographers. Fitment, if I were to stand 5, even 10 feet away, the panel gaps on these cars do look a bit funny, and they're probably the only model company on this entire list where I can say that, because... Auto arts look beautiful even when you're inches away from it in the face. Maestos, they still look beautiful until you get about one feet away. Then you can see the drop in quality, but it's not groundbreaking. And BBR is the same thing. You get, usually have to get like a couple feet before you really care about the quality. But Motor Maxes, you're going to notice even from a distance that they kind of have wonky panel gaps. It's just the Zonda's door. I notice it every time I walk into my study. I just look at its door fender fitment and the, the, the Diablo. The whole reason the cars face the way they do on my shelves is because I don't want to see the Diablo's rear end because unfortunately the Diablo's rear end is just terrible. I only have two of their models, but based on all the reviews I read on them, this is a recurring issue with their cars. So if you're someone who is okay with that being a weakness, even though it's a strong weakness, because it's their only weakness. Everything else on them is actually better than Maisto. I would rank the brand overall still better than them, but panel gaps do make or break, especially for photographers. BBR, best budget model. That's really all I have to say in regards to them. I mean, they blow Maisto's and Motor Max's out of the water in the sense that they don't have any weaknesses. I mean, they're a little bit more expensive. They'll be about 8 to $10 more expensive for the same model of car. Like you can buy Mercy from Maisto for, I believe, about 30 bucks. You can also buy a Mercy from BBR for about, you know, 40, 45 bucks. And it's worth that extra cost because these cars are insane. They don't have any paint issues. They don't have weak hinges. They don't have bad suspension. They don't make weird noises when you pick them up. They're the best budget model. If you're someone who just wants a very, very nice budget model, these this is the brand I'd recommend. And honestly, their only weakness is that they're just not quite as detailed. You know, they don't go the extra mile on small things. So they will still have fake carbon. They're not going to have functional vents. But when you're paying these prices, you don't care about those small details. Details. That's something you only want from Fronty Arts, Auto Arts, and Kyosho's. So I don't even consider that a weakness. If I had to recommend a single brand for someone who's just starting out to at least own one of in their lifetime, if you're a car enthusiast, get a BBR of just your favorite car. They have a wide variety of wine selection. And remember, I have all these cars linked down below on Amazon. And you can always just browse Amazon or even eBay. 
I definitely recommend them. Honestly, with all things in consideration, they're the biggest winner of this video. I would say 10 out of 10 because they're priced well, they look great. Also, here's my Genshin Impact character collection. No, I'm not sponsored. I'm just trying to flex my waifus on y'all for tax write-off purposes. Here's my main DPS, Beto, and her legendary wolf's gravestone. You have no idea how much I had to chase this girl. Like, I have a two constellation coaching before I had a Beto, and it's freaking annoying. Because she's only a four star, yet I couldn't for the life of me roll her. She was the last character I recently got. And she's the last four star I think I got. I literally have every four star in the game except for her for the longest time. I kept getting repeats. It just physically hurt me to see people get her as their first four star while I, and then they would cry about spending like $5,000 to get coaching. Yet my dumb butt who doesn't really care about coaching, despite, yeah, I leveled her, shut up. I only spent like $10 on the battle pass and $5 on the blessing and I have two of her. I've gotten her twice and suck on that whales. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Bye-bye.